Today we're going to be taking a look at problem 1.3 from Griffith's Intro to Quantum Mechanics. This one says consider the Gaussian distribution rho of x as it's stated there. We're given uh, several real constants and it also mentions some uh, integrals inside the back cover of the book. I've included um, two integrals below right here and right here and both of these integrals are essential to solving so many of the uh, integrals that we use in quantum mechanics just in general. Um, the one on the right here is from the book, the one on the left is actually from another source, um, but I would recommend using both of these um, rather than anything else that it includes in the back cover. Those ones are really the most important, especially for this problem. Uh, e part 1, or part A, use equation 1.16 to determine the constant A. And so there's 1.16 right there, that integral um, being equal to 1. That's called uh, a normalization integral used to determine A, which is the normalization constant. And then we have part B, find the expectation value of x, expectation value of x squared, as well as sigma. And part C, sketch a graph of rho of x. All right, so getting started here with part A. And again, asking us to use the integral from negative infinity to infinity rho of x um, dx equals to one equal to one and we're going to be solving for a so rho of x equals a e to the negative lambda times x minus a squared let's plug that in negative infinity to infinity a e to the negative lambda x minus a squared equals 1. So we can pull out a, uh, we can pull the a out front, it's just a constant, negative infinity to infinity e to the negative lambda x minus a squared now, and excuse me, I'm forgetting dx on both of those. All right, now we're going to do just a really quick simple substitution x minus a is going to be substituted for u dx of course then it's going to substitute for du our bounds of integration are going to be the same you can um, work that out yourself so we have a times integral negative infinity to infinity e to the negative lambda u squared du Okay, now we stop for a second and we say, okay, well, that looks exactly like this one right here. Let me copy that, bring it down below. You can look at them right next to each other. So we have an integral going from negative infinity to infinity, e to the negative, uh, some constant, x squared dx. That's going to equal the square root of pi over whatever that constant is in front of the x squared. So really simply then, we see that this equals a times square root of pi over lambda, seeing as lambda then is clearly that constant a right there. Okay. Now we also know that that equals 1. That's given to us from 1.16 that that integral equals 1. That's what normalization is all about. We're setting that integral equal to 1. Therefore, you can see that a is equal to the square root of lambda over pi. Okay, so now with a being found, real quick, um, just best practice to plug that back in to our equation. So rho of x is now equal to the square root of lambda over pi times, we remember, e to the negative lambda x minus a quantity squared. All right, and so that is valid for all x values. Perfect, from negative infinity to infinity. So that's our normalized probability distribution. Going on, part b, we're asked, we're asked to find two different expectation values and then to use those to find sigma. So the first one, expectation value of x, and we know 
just by definition that the expectation value of x is going to be given by the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times whatever this function is, so that's rho of x, and then integral dx. All right. Now again, that's just by definition. Rho of x could be any generic function f of x. Um, but here, specifically, we're being asked to find the expectation value for rho of x. So that's why we plug that in. And now we can actually write that all out. So that is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times, we have it written right here, rho of x. So that's square root of lambda over pi e to the negative lambda x minus a squared, quantity squared, dx. Okay. Now, this is where we kind of want to get a little creative again. So we're going to look back to that substitution we did above and say, okay, well, x then, if x minus a is equal to u, then x is equal to u plus a. So let's let x equal u plus a now. Again, that's just based on the same substitution that we just did. But now what that allows us to do is we have an integral from negative infinity to infinity of u plus a quantity times, and I could have pulled this out, but I just didn't in this line, but that's the square root of lambda over pi. That's just a constant at this point. e to the negative lambda, now u squared. If we plug in u plus a for x right here, you know, we see that the a's cancel, so it's just u squared. And dx is going to go to du again. All right. So now really what we have is two different integrals. Let's pull out our constants. So we have square root of lambda over pi out front, big brackets. We're going to do integral from negative infinity to infinity of u e to the negative lambda u squared du. And then we're going to add the little a from right here, little a, and that's a constant, so we can leave it out front, negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative lambda u squared du. And this is where we need to say again, okay, we know this formula up here is very useful. Um, and that is going to reduce the same result as it did previously when we did the integral. So we're going to have, for this part right here, that is going to become a times square root of pi. I'm going to do a different bracket. Actually, we'll just write this. a times square root of pi over lambda. That's what that um, comes out to just, again, based off of this formula right here. All right. Now, what about this one? This one is actually really simple. We see that it's actually an odd function. And what I mean by odd function is I mean that there's a symmetry such that when we do the integral, it's going to cancel to zero. So if you actually sketch this, and this just is something that you come to see over time, but if you actually sketch it, it looks something like that. And so when you integrate, you're going to be integrating this negative region, adding it to this positive region, and you're going to get zero. And that's exactly what happens. So this whole integral right here is going to go to zero. And therefore, our expectation value of x is going to equal, and don't forget the square root of lambda over pi out front, square root of lambda over pi, big brackets, 0, plus a square root of pi over lambda, which you can see is just a. So there are some 
things that you have to get used to as far as how to take these integrals. But once you learn how to use the um, just the general formulas from here and also the other one that we'll use in a minute, uh, these integrals actually become really easy. So going on, we're going to solve for expectation value x squared. All right, so expectation value of x squared is equal to integral from negative infinity to infinity, x squared, rho of x dx, which we'll just plug in for rho of x right now. That's lambda over pi e to the negative lambda times x minus a quantity squared dx. Again, we're going to say let x equal uh, u plus a. We're going to say let dx equal du. So what we have then, we have that this expectation value of x squared is equal to square root of lambda over pi times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of this quantity u plus a squared. We're plugging in x equals u plus a. We're plugging that in up front. So u plus a quantity squared. And then we're going to have uh, e to the negative lambda u squared because u plus a minus a is equal to u, and then we square that, so u squared du. Okay, so you notice pretty quickly we're going to have three terms here because of this u plus a. And obviously u, u plus a is going to expand into uh, u squared plus 2ua plus a squared. So that's our expansion, so those are our three integrals. So let's go ahead and take these integrals. Let's write them out. That equals square root of lambda over pi. That's out front in front of everything. And here's our integrals. Negative infinity to infinity of u squared e to the negative lambda u squared du. That's going to be our tough one. Next one, plus 2a, that's a constant, negative infinity to infinity of u e to the negative lambda u squared du. And our final one, plus a squared integral, negative infinity to infinity e to the negative lambda, lambda u squared du. Close your bracket. All right. So let's start with the easiest one. The easiest one is the middle one right here. By the same reasoning, we see that this is an odd function. And so just like this graph up above, just like how we canceled it before, we see that this middle integral goes to zero. So that's a nice symmetry. Second one that's going to be pretty easy is going to be the, the one at the end there. a squared integral negative infinity to infinity e to the negative lambda u squared du. So that you can see is the exact same formula um, type integral that we've been working with where we can just say that that equals this part right there equals a squared times square root of pi over lambda perfect and here's where it gets a little trickier is with this first integral this is where we actually have to plug in a little bit so first off we notice that by the u squared power this is going to be an even function. So what we can do, I'm going to use blue for this one as well. What we can do is say, hey, that equals 2 times integral 0 to infinity of u squared e to the negative lambda u squared du. So we're just saying it's 2 times half the integral, right? So that's easy. We can do that. That makes sense. Now let's go up to the beginning here. This is where we saved this integral right here. I'll bring that all the way down. And here's what we're working with here. So based off of this integral, we can say, okay, hey, I see that n here equals one. So if you see your, here we have u and here we have x, but you can see that the power um, x to the 2n, well here's our 2n, and n just equals 1. And then we can also say, okay, e to the negative x squared over a squared. Well, I don't have e to the negative x squared over a squared. I have e to the negative lambda over u squared 
excuse me, e to the negative lambda u squared. So let's leave our u squared in the, in the numerator, and let's say that lambda then equals 1 divided by a squared. So lambda equals 1 divided by a squared, because if we do that, now all of a sudden we have e to the negative u squared over a squared. That's of the same, uh, that's the same form as what we need for this integral. Okay. And now while, while we're at it, let's just also solve for a. That This tells us that a is going to equal 1 over square root of lambda. There we go, 1 over square root of lambda. And I'm not being completely thorough in this problem, but we'll continue to solve it like this, and we'll see where it takes us. So this is going to equal then 2, this is the 2 from up above, and then the integral, now let's follow this form. So we have square root of pi, 2n, n equals 1, so that's 2 factorial over uh, 1 factorial, and then we're going to have a over 2 times 2n, so 2 plus 1 is 3. All right, so let's just kind of combine here real quick. We have uh, 4 square root of pi over 8, that's 2 cubed, times a cubed. Okay, so what's a cubed? a cubed is going to be, let's just rewrite this, 4 square root of pi over 8, which actually we'll just put square root of pi over 2. And then a cubed, you can see, is just um, lambda to, well, we can just write lambda to the 3 halves power in the denominator. Okay. So if we just plug everything back into what we had before, um, when we wrote these big giant brackets up here, we have square root of lambda over pi up front. So square root of lambda over pi big bracket. And then what we got for our answer here was square root of pi over 2 lambda to the 3 halves. And then we had plus 0 plus pi over lambda for our third integral times a squared. All right. So we can cancel a ton of things here. This is going to take that that uh, square root of lambda is going to take this lambda in the first um, part here just to the power of 1. It's going to completely get rid of that lambda down there. These pi's are all going to cancel. What we're left with then is that expectation value of x squared is equal to 1 over 2 lambda plus a squared. Now let's find sigma. Sigma is super simple. Square root of expectation value x squared minus expectation value of x quantity squared. Now, what was expectation value of x? Well, that was just a. So if we square that quantity, we get a squared. So that means square root 1 over 2 lambda plus a squared. That's the first part. And then we subtract a squared from our other answer. Those cancel. Sigma then equals 1 over square root of 2 lambda. And that's your final answer for part B. Now, going on to part C, um, this part, I've already kind of worked this part out. If we just open this up right here, we'll show. There we go. So here's part C. Now this part I drew for the special case where uh, we have lambda equal to one, a equal to three. Now what you'll notice when you draw these, uh, they all, you know, they follow much the same pattern, um, of course. 
when you have these Gaussian curves, it's always some sort of curve like this. And we can see that a equals 3, well, that just tells us where's the um, highest point located as far as the, the x value of the highest point. And then the lambda, as we increase that, that's actually going to increase the amplitude. And when we do that, you'll notice that sigma is inversely proportional to the square root of lambda. And so as we increase lambda, we're actually also going to decrease the standard deviation, which means that these sides are going to push in and the graph itself or the, the amplitude is going to increase. All right. Now, just a quick little um, animation to wrap it up. We can see that as we vary a and as we vary lambda, we get this sort of um, curve going on. And this is just letting it freely vary. So, um, you know, you could vary it in so many different ways, um, you know, similar to this too, just within this range. Um, but this is a completely variable curve. And that's your final answer to part C.